Some basketball for you there. Sport update on Trust TV. Um, Adini Aji Shafe. We run through some stories in the world of sports. It's always good when you look at our athletes for what they do. We just need to always appreciate them. And right now, we start with the first story. Dare charges Scrabble Federation and Grassroots Development. That's the first story we are looking at. After, after the Nigeria Scrabble Federation visited him in Abuja, uh, where they presented the current junior champion, uh, Onazi, eight-year-old Onazi, winning Nigeria uh, Scrabble Junior Championship. And they just have to uh, meet with the minister. And now we say, well, they make sure they promote grassroots because right now, when it comes to Scrabble, Nigeria is number one in the world. A lot of talents across this country when it comes to the language that we actually borrow from England. But really, we are dominating. Alongside... Lawali Peters, good to have you. Yeah, and um, good evening, Adeni. It's my mm. pleasure being here. I see um, you smiling there. <laughs> yes, uh, the statements and the language we borrow from other yes. and other countries. I wish we can play the Scrabble also in our own uh, Na, in indigenous. Indig yes. Yeah. So and um, see how people will now be um, competing. Become, be competing. Maybe it will still be as good as we are when we are playing the Scrabble using the, the, broad, language. the broad language. So I think it's a very good one, and it's a very, very good one, and it's a very good development. And the game of Scrabble, it's actually gaining momentum in the country right now. Take it or leave it. It's a game that, and people are now paying more attention to it. You know, uh, one thing we are good at in this country is when we borrow something, probably a culture or what have you, we perfect it better than from people who borrowed it from. The people that we took their... Um, language. Their, their language we are even better when it's come to if you see some nigerian speaking i don't know maybe you've experienced it before when you are at the airport and you're waiting for your flight exactly when they finish speaking you ask yourself what did she say? <laughs> what, did say? What, what, what really happened uh, so that you, at time you will be looking at yourself uh, wait are you sure you're, you're, you're talking to yourself now are you sure say so they're hearing English? <laughs> <laughs> so that is that is how good we have oh, in this country when we are determined to do something just eight years old I bet you, by the time these guys get to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years, if the government do not leave him, he's going to be a world champion in the game of Scrabble. That's what we have been saying here. We shouldn't be looking at football as the only sport. Yeah, speak Scrabble now. Yes, so do you understand? So we shouldn't be looking at it this time around. So I think it's a very, very good development. Then we should not go deeper than this. Tony Dyer is talking about the grassroots. How do we get it in the, in the grassroots? We will not stop talking about the need for us to review or revisit our academic curriculum because that is where you can start it from. It's just eight year old, so it's still in school, primary school. So in a situation whereby we still, how many schools are still doing PHE up to now? Those days we have a teacher for the PHE. Of course. It's not only about sports. Sports is not only for recreational activities. It is for business and it is for education also. Because some way that you've never heard of before in your life during Scrabble, you have to take dictionary and say, ah. Is oh, it, are you sure you're not forming this don't just, don't, just, don't just form this. Like we have, uh, we have uh, this uh, former honorable from Ogodomi Ogdo. Yeah, from, okay, from, from Edo. From Edo State, Patrick. By the time he speaks now, you'll be thinking that, is this one English or is it your local? Or Latin. Or Latin. So I think we really need to go to that grassroots to introduce most of these sports, especially the indoors one, to the academic curriculum so that we can get the best of our youth. We can get them right from the grassroots. If you're talking about what we, what we had during our own days, you hardly see a school, a secondary school, in the 80s and 90s that does not have a pitch for football. Even primary school. Primary school. 
But right now, what you have is two or three bedroom flats, mm. and you see nursery, primary, and secondary school. And you now be asking yourself, where are they putting them? Mm. So that is where we are really getting it wrong. We need to get it right. And how can we get it right? We'll go back to the grassroots. Where is the grassroots we are talking about? Through the education. Because sport is not only about uh, your dieting or for recreational activities or for fun. No. It is business to start with, then it is for education because you learn a lot of things that you don't know about when it comes to the game of sport. That is why um, infrastructural development is very, very important. Exposure is very, very important. As he is right now, as the boy is right now, they should start giving him a, uh, a developmental program that will make him to compete among his peers in Africa and even in the world. Let him see how it is. Not that we're going to forget about him now or nobody will do anything or to maybe no, the next... I, I lo sorry to cut you short. I love the fact that uh, the minister deemed fit to say, okay, they will take care of his education from now and henceforth. They will take care of his edu education and every event that he's going for, they will take charge. Yeah. So at least that will be a good one. At least the family will say, okay, if the federal government has taken over your education, it's just for you to go to school and any event coming up as at the junior level you'll be participating that will be fund allocated. I think I love that. Okay, and I think um, I'm a believer of process. Not just because something happened, mm. then all of a sudden you said, I'm doing this for you, I'm doing this that for you. We should have a a, a, a proper policy guiding all this um uh, like all this scholarship. Or whatever, mm. so that you know before the competition that if I win it, this is, is what I get. this is what I am going to get. Now, Sunday Dari is going to finish, and is uh, the uh, administration will finish in the next few weeks. We don't know who is going to come in as the next minister of youth and sports. If the next person comes and said no, what is said, we don't have it documented anyway. I'm it's, sure they will do that. They want to document this because no. Oh, this is Nigeria. Mm. Is this not in this country that snake monkey are swallowing money? <laughs> will you ever believe that something like that will happen in this country? Mm. Is it not in this country that we have people that represented this country? They got to wear to uh, to represent and fly our flag. They don't have shoes. They don't have no shoes, jersey. No, no jersey. Kit. Nothing. No kit. Is it not in this same country? Is it that money or money is not budgeted for the expense? Those kids. Mm. So this is Nigeria. Anything. I say anything can happen. And most annoying thing is people get away with it as if nothing has happened. We have some people that they are still they are, they are, that the federal government is still owing them their allowances. A lot of athletes are not being paid. They are not being paid. So how sure are we that that will not happen? Mm -hmm. But the only way we know that it will not happen is if it is well documented. So we know that going forward, this is what we are going to have and this is how it's going to be. I think we shouldn't be doing something based on our emotion in this country. It should be well planned, well documented, and well announced so that everybody would know that this is what is happening. In fact, the amount, if possible, should be stated before you see it now. They will give you at the end of the year that you spend over 10 million US dollars on this eight-year-old boy because they send him to Rwanda or they send him to South Africa. Come and do the breakdown. We don't know it. It's a very good development. They want to take it over, but the right thing should be done to be sure that um, the the boy he got what he deserved. And the issue of them saying any competition that he wants to attend, no, it shouldn't be the one. No, it, I'm talking. It, I, it I, is I, the that language, of course. They they have a template. The Nigerian Scrabble Federation exactly. has a template of a competition. In fact, they're supposed to hand him over to the Nigerian Scrabble Federation for his developmental program, program going forward. Every year, you have to go for a training, you have to go for a competition, you're, you're going to be on scholarship, all through when. No, now, when they said they're going to take over his education, is it up to PhD level? Maybe, maybe if you like, you should study astronomy. <laughs> <laughs> so, all, 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 all those things need to really be, re be defined. Oh, we're going to sponsor his education up to master's higher level. institution, master's level, or first degree. But when you leave it open-ended, so that means even if he wants to do PhD after PhD, you go and do professorship after professorship, you say, I want to add another one again. That is the point I'm trying, so that we don't make and uh, give room for those with the bad intention. I know Sunday that he has a good intention. If you look at the development of sport in this country since he came on board, we've seen a lot of initiative, we've seen a lot of innovation, a lot of creativity, and a lot of improvement. I wish whoever is coming, after him, will be better than him. So that we don't have the case of a predecessor 
better than successor, which we always have in this country. Well, we'll be talking concerning the young Onazi there, representing Nigeria, and right now he's what Africa, rather, Nigerian champion at the junior level, and he was presented to the Minister of Youth and Sport Development, on the diary there, and now they have been charged to make sure they develop Scrabble at the grassroots level. From that particular story, let's talk about the ping pong sport called table tennis. Nigeria contingent, four of them, two ladies, that is of young Edem, and also Fatima Belo, alongside Aruna Kodri and Olajide Omotayo. They will be at the World Table Tennis Championship over there in Durban. 128 world stars are expected, and that game will be starting from May 20. And right now, they want to make sure uh, they participate, and we want to see our own ladies, uh, of young and uh, Motayo Olajide, not forgetting Fatima Belo and African number one, Aruna Kodri. If they were able to do where they'll be competing against a lot of uh, world beaters, world stars, Ma Long, world number three, not forgetting Kuchin, she he will be there too, and also a lot of African stars like Dina Meshrev of Egypt, not uh, forgetting Omar Asa of Egypt, who recently defeated Aruna Kodri at the African Tennis Championship, will also be there to compete. 128 world beaters in table tennis gathering in Durban, mm -hmm. South Africa. Okay, and uh, we, are, we are looking at uh, familiar names and going for a familiar competition. And most of the people they are going to play against are people that they've known before. So what I know, they need to, what I think they need to do, which I'm very sure they will have done, is to look at their own area of strength and look at the area of weakness of their opponents and see how they can capitalize. Because this uh, table tennis game, ping pong that we are talking about, mm. It's, it's, it's a game of concentration. Take it or leave it. Once you lose the concentration, you lose a point. And you losing a point means you can even lose a game. So you should know that, okay, when I'm serving, I have five, five service. I have to have a service that, from my own service, I should take at least a minimum of three points from the available five points there. So once you have that, you know you are having your service 10. From the 10, you are getting six. From your own opponent also, you know how to return the service because that is where you normally get it from once you don't know how to return the service just like the, uh, tennis. the, the tennis also servicing it's very 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 important some services come that once you have it you didn't get it the five points you just lose it the way it is i know they are professional when it comes to that and i'm very sure they're going to make us proud the way they have been doing but we need to start building succession we have to start doing that because these same names we've been hearing this for how many years for how many years will they continue to dominate the uh, the table tennis in Nigeria and I know Bethany if you have an open camp you'll be surprised that we'll see people that can beat Aruna Kodri mm. of course I'm very sure we have people in this country that when we have an open camp for table tennis we we'll have people that can beat Aruna Kodri what what we had then Ujidi Oba competition being sponsored by uh, Okoya Thomas family that's why we have Yomi Bankole Atanda Musa people that you don't even know they will just come Table tennis, uh, I'm not a professional, but just give me bat. Even when you give them a standard bat, they say, I'm not used to this one. I, I'm used to Paco bats. And they will do well. And they will do very well. So what they just need is training, exposure, and experience. So I think we have to start building it so that it won't be a case of, oh, you are good, and we're going to use you until you won out. It shouldn't be that case. We've been talking concerning table tennis. We are Nigerian contingent. We'll be in Durban. And they will be competing for honors in table tennis. Uh, World Table Tennis Championship coming up. Over there, 128 world beaters will be there. Well, hopefully they can do well. Away from uh, table tennis, let's talk about the basketball. Slam and dunk sport, where MBBF, Nigerian Basketball Federation, invites under-16 boys and girls to open trials in Lagos and Abuja. They want to make sure they develop basketball, and that's why they are giving under-16 under, uh, 16 boys and girls the chance to have an open trial where the best will be picked. But some actually said, well, we just saw that truly the best will be picked because uh, we've seen situations whereby uh, when you do open trials, <laughs> already the list is on, is on ground. Uh, then the open trial is just for the formality. All of you just go out there and sweat it out, but the name is there. So it's, it, it will be very, very good if truly we want to get our uh, sport well developed. Pick the best you can see on that uh, particular day of trial so that yes we know that we have good hands in basketball okay and uh, one good thing i respect us for in this country is uh, we know how to deceive ourselves if we want to do the right thing we, we know, also know how, to, how do. to do it and mm -hmm. if we want to do the wrong thing 
we know how to deceive ourselves. That's why I said that's one good thing about us in this country. And um, if you want to get it right, you know what to do. Let me take us, take us back to the days of uh, Prince Pass Cup. From Prince Pass Cup, from the Nuga Games. Nipoga you, Games. Nipoga Games. Mm. You get people that will represent Nigeria in almost all the competition. The same thing, the Milo Championship, or you can call all these our blue ship companies, multinationals. Your own uh, CSR, corporate social responsibilities. I want you to sponsor the basketball for under 15, because if you, if you really want to look, get under 15 or under 17, you have to go to the secondary school. Of course. Not to say open camp. So what they need to do, the federal government needs to do is to partner with them. Bois, Cement, Dangote, Coca-Cola. Mm. Uh, what we need to do for them is just very simple that all these blue ship companies come in and do what? And sponsor this program. From there, you have your own ma match officials that will do what? That will represent. And from there, the selection process will take place. Not that you said I'm opening a camp. Like rightly said, they have list already. They kept it somewhere. And after the competition, they say, oh, you, you tried, um, but we just discovered that your height is too much. We discovered that you need to go on diet and abracadababa who entered, who entered it. I think uh, the best way to do it is to reintroduce all this in our secondary school curriculum and have all these multinational and blue ship company to sponsor. Give someone, let them take care of the basketball. Give someone, let them take care of the football. Give someone, let them take care of the scrabble. Give another thing, let them take care of wrestling, boxing, and we have the competition. Imagine all the state, and the way it will be done, you have a qualifier mm. from the Northwest. All the Northwest, before it comes to the Northwest zone, all the school in each state, they will compete against one another. And the winner will now go to the zone to represent their zone. From there, you can't tell me that you won't pick where. If you want to do it, you look at the academ uh, uh, academic calendar. When they are on break, is that the first time, second time, or third term. When are we going to plan for this program? Is it going to be for two weeks or for three weeks? Adequate and proper planning. Preparation. Mm. Preparation and planning is what we need to get it right. But this one, I'll be honest with you, I don't believe in it. Well, from the way it is, let's just hope that something good will come out from this under 16 male and female. Uh, trials will be coming up in Abuja and also Lagos. It will give an opportunity to all those uh, young lads out there who hope to go into basketball to become the likes of Akim Olajumu, not forgetting Vito Oladipo of this world. Well, a lot of basketball players across Nigeria, both in the junior and also senior level, are really uh, showcasing a lot of talents there. From there, let's quickly look at matches later for this uh, uh, evening. Uh, let's look at those games. Cadiz versus Real Valladolid. Freiburg in Germany playing host to another Borg team, Wolfsburg, Sassuolo, Monza, Lyon, Monaco. Big match there in France between Olympic Lyonnais and uh, AS Monaco there. Well, those are the four matches uh, slated for uh, tonight but across the uh, different centre in Europe. And uh, you look at uh, Lyon and Monaco is so huge. Uh, it's a match that everybody wants to watch because it's like uh, <laughs> another big uh, El Clasico in France. Well, okay, and for most supporters, and what they're looking out for is where their team will finish at the end of the season. And I think the title has been already decided. Decided, yes. The time, I mean, sorry, decided in most of the leagues. Take it or leave it. But what it's now left is the fight for survivor. And let me be sure that I survive to remain in the league. Let me be sure that I win my last two or three matches to qualify or play in Europe. And nobody's playing for, for fun again. Take it or leave it. And those that they are already confident that, okay, I'm not playing like, um, let me use Chelsea for example now. They're not playing in Conference League. They're not playing in Champions League. And they're not playing in Europe <laughs> next season also for them, um, they're not doing that. <clears throat> they're not going to be relegated. So what they have to do now is just to play for pride for the next two or three matches. But if you look at other teams, like Sao Solo and Konao, they are fighting for survivor. That I need to win one or two of my remaining three matches to remain in Italia, Syria. Mm. So it's going to be very, very interesting. And it won't be uh, a game that uh, anybody should take for granted, except those that they've guaranteed their space or their place in the league. 
Well, we've been talking a lot of uh, sports and activities. They are giving you updates concerning matches coming up with Olawale Peters there. Monaco Leon will be a big one there. Well, we just have to go now on sport update. It's been a wonderful time with you, Olawale Peters. Thank you so much for having me, Adene. And I hope by the time we speak next, it will be Man City winning the Premier League. <laughs> You're getting that made there. As I can see, win the league. <laughs> that will be it on the show. I'm Adene Aji Shafer. Thanks for watching.